hey, look at this. That's a head mark. That was made by somebody that found a reason why they didn't want to wear their seat belts. I'm Sergeant Jack Ware, a state trooper. And you know, no matter how many of these head marks we find on wrecked automobiles, usually in here, there's room to live. I brought a group of my friends here today, and we're going to discuss why people won't wear their seat belts and see if we can't blow some holes in those reasons. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. You know, every year in the United States, we kill 50,000 people. 50,000 in automobile accidents. I don't know whether you relate to 50,000 or not, but that's a college football stadium filled to the brim. That's an enormous amount of people, and you know, they're no different than you and I. They, but one day, they got in their automobile, and they backed out of their driveway, and they went someplace, and they never came home. 50,000 people every year. That doesn't have to happen if we could convince people to wear their seat belts. You know, there's so many reasons why people won't wear their seat belts. I've heard it over and over again. The best one I've heard usually comes from fellas. They say, hey, did you see my car? Wasn't it a mess? Boy, I'm lucky I got thrown out of that thing. The policeman told me if I'd have been in that, I'd have been dead. Hey, you know what? That policeman needs a good swift kick. How does he know? Is he all of a sudden playing God? Hey, do you know what I can tell you about being thrown out of the car at the scene of an accident? That's the number one killer. If you want to die in an automobile accident, get thrown out of the car. Hey, get the picture. Bang, you have an accident. You're flying through the air like a great big bird. No. <laughs> you always want to do that. Hit your head on the telephone pole. It smarts. Gives you a headache. Or better yet, bang, the cars come together and out the door you go, hoo, 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 hoo. you're sliding down the pavement. You know, no, no, no seat left in your britches by the time you get to those little white sharp stones on the shoulder. Hey, we can always find you after that though because we got a bloody smear going on down into the ditch over that little grassy bank and down into about that much water. Hey, and you're down there and you're sitting there. Boy, am I lucky. Never mind you're sitting on a broken beer bottle. And you look up and here comes a friend of yours. Your friend? It's your car. He says, move over, Charlie. I want to get in a ditch with you. Hey, people, you don't have to be a genius to know that if you get thrown out of the car at the scene of an accident, you're going to go in the direction of the force. What direction is your car going to come? Same direction, unless something stops it. Hey, today you're lucky. Your car hit, bang, stayed right there. And away you went down the road. But hey, here comes an 18-wheeler. And he sees all of this thing happening in front of him, and he sees this bundle coming down the road at him. He says, hey, what's that? And he dodges it with the, with the right side of the truck, but the left side goes thump, 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 thump. Guess what that was? You. People, you've got to stay in that automobile to live. Fasten down. Hey, don't take my word for it. Go to the junkyard. You know where the junkyard is in your area. Go there. Look at the cars in that junkyard. They're smashed here, 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 here. The roofs are caved in. The windows are gone. But hey, in 99, in 99 one hundreds, hey, that sounds like an ivory soap commercial. This area right in here is intact. There's room to live in there. Don't take my word for it. Look yourself. There's room to live. Hey, you know, people, our astronauts, our astronauts go up in the air at 25,000 miles an hour. Now, I don't relate to 25,000 miles an hour, but when they're sitting up here in their space capsule, and all of a sudden somebody touches a match to this thing, away it goes. 
and it gains hundreds of miles per hour. Before these guys can become astronauts, they have to be able to be stand seven Gs. The gravitational pull of the Earth, as this thing is accelerating, there's a tremendous force on their body. Seven Gs. You know what seven Gs does to them? Stretches their mouth clear out to here. Flattens their nose on their face. Pushes their eyeballs back in socket. Rolls their forehead back. Wads their face up. It's doing the same thing to the rest of their body. <gasps> they can't take a deep breath like that. They have to pant like a dog. Their heart can hardly beat. It's just working under tremendous pressure to keep blood moving. That's seven Gs. Are you with me? A car traveling 35 miles an hour. Now that's bicycle speed. Car traveling 35 miles an hour hitting a tree the back of a stop truck, a driveway culvert, a bridge abutment at 35 miles an hour exerts between two and 300 G's on everything in that car. Two to 300 G's and our astronauts can stand seven G's and it stretches them all out of shape. Now the only reason that you can live through that at all is because it takes place. You hear the crack of my hand, it takes place that quick. Two to 300 G's are applied and they're gone. If you had to stay in that force field for five seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, you know the best way I can describe what would happen to you? Throw a snowball up against that wall. And somebody says, hey, I don't need a seat belt on. You know, it's amazing why people think that that force is taking place outside and doing all of that destruction and it isn't happening inside. Look at the outside of that car. Now your bumper is cleared back here around by your rear tire. The motor is upside down underneath the driver's seat. That shiny red fender that you waxed all last Saturday, hey, it's wadded up over here like a paper ball. Hey, come on, people, go for a ride with me a minute. Come on. Hey, this is my friend Harry. Nice guy. Hey, gals, you like him? He cute. He blonde hair, got a couple of dimples here. Hey, Harry, where are we going? Oh, the beach? Okay, God, I don't need those seat belts on. Okay, I'm ready. Hey, you see that stop sign? Oh, nobody coming? All right, all right. Whee! Wow. I think I locked my door. Whee! What'll I do if we have an accident? You ever thought about that when you're riding down the road in a car? What'll I do if we have an accident? Oh, I know. I'll throw up my feet and catch myself. You know what happens? You throw up your feet and catch yourself? Swallow your kneecap. Or if you don't swallow your kneecap, you bite it in half. And in the process, you knock half your teeth down your throat. So for the rest of your life, you're... <laughs> or, oh, Superman. Oh, Superman, he says, hey, man, I lift weights. Man, I can put 350 pounds up there. Pull-ups, we one hand. Hey, I can do it. Push-ups, you count them. Which hand you want me to do? Put him in the car. What'll I do if I have an accident? Oh, I'm going to throw my hand right out here. Man, I got a grip. Oh, we can do that hand. I'll stick it in my pocket. I don't even need it. Well, I got it. I might as well use it. I'm going to stick it. No, no, I won't either. I'm going to grab a hold up here. Understand they mash their brains out on that thing. Man, I got a grip. Hey, guys, you think you can do that? I'll tell you what. Tonight when you go home, take your wife. Get a stepladder and put her up on the garage roof. And then get around the end of the garage and say, Come on, Harriet, jump. I'll catch you. She going to do it? Ah, hey, you're liable to hurt her. Have your son, Freddy, take a hundred-pound bag of cement up there. Drop it, Fred! Hey, don't get under the bag. But I have got a test you can do. Put on a pair of shorts and a pair of tennis shoes and go out in your backyard. You know, get way back in the shrubbery because your neighbors are going to think you're nuts. And look at the back of your house and pick a spot where there's no windows and put an imaginary X up there. And then when you think nobody's looking, just start running just as fast as you can. And when you get to the back of the house, throw your hands up and catch yourself. Stupid? Hey, <laughs> you better believe. Hey, how fast can you run? 10, 12 miles an hour? And you can't catch yourself going 10, 12 miles an hour. What makes you think going down the road 40 or 50 miles an hour, you can stick these things out and catch yourself?